Obviously, I can't see you <laughs> on a webinar format, but I know that you're here. So, um, what we're going to do today is to really clarify a bit about the two options that we shared with um, the public at those town hall meetings last week. Um, we want to be sure that first um, you understand that if you are not interested in the Click Academy and you want your child to eventually come to these schools in the Click Academy, you do not need to submit anything. You don't need to submit the form. Um, you don't need to do anything as far as um, letting us know you will automatically be identified to be in the Click Academy. There may be special work that you need to submit at your level, but there's nothing that you need to do regarding those surveys that went out. Um, the biggest question that, that we are getting um, relates to schedules, sample schedules. We are finalizing those sample schedules and we will have a sample for elementary, middle, and high that we will share out today so that parents can see what today you know, life of a child would look like. Um, we also um, are getting questions about special education and how we identify whether or not the click option is the best option. Once you uh, indicate that you are um, going to select the option, then our SSD staff and our district staff will work with you to be sure that your child's IEP goals can still be met. This would also be for students who may have a 504. Um, students who may be um, ESL or students um, who may have some other related services. So we're still working through that piece so that we can give you as much information as possible. The August 1st date is a date that we need in order to um, determine the number of people that we may have in either option. As of um, this morning, we have 220 elementary students that have identified CLIC, 114 students in grades eight through eight, and then 130. You're breaking up a little bit. I'm trying to figure out maybe if you want to reposition a little. I'm at the high school, so it could be. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Um, so we have um, 220 students in grades K through five that have identified the CLIC Academy. 114 in grades 6 through 8, and 136 grades 9 through 12. We will send out uh, this information by grade and building after the first. Um, also, there is a town hall on August 3rd, so that um, just for those parents to identify the Clip Academy, so that we can address any further questions and make sure that you understand what happened. You are selecting. Um, this is a very fluid process. And you may have heard um, this week that the county is adding additional restrictions to um, do the um, an additional. Um, I don't know why I'm still picking up. So it was a little bit better in a different location. Uh, they have added additional restrictions to the order, and so the gathering number has been reduced again. Um, there is also a special meeting with the governor with a few superintendents tomorrow. I will be attending uh, that meeting, and I will continue to keep this community informed. So that is where we are. Um, my hope is that you can decipher what I'm saying through the choppiness. I'm talking slower just in case I'm choppy. I do apologize uh, for that. We have a lot of leaders that are using um, our, our system right now and um I don't know why it's breaking up. So that's what we are but I can stop now and respond to any questions. And as I do that I'm going to move to a different location. Thank you Sharonica. Yeah if you were chopping in and out so we'll give it a it shot. It may not get better. I apologize. I'll do my best. All right. Thank you. The first question is for the hybrid elementary model, will my child have to the same teacher in person two days and three days virtually, or will there be a different teacher doing the virtual lessons? So the hybrid model would be um, the same teacher on that Monday and Tuesday. 
And then we have what is called um, STEM teachers that we are identifying at the district level that will have a unique expertise in the area of STEM and will be able to do more project-based learning with our students. So they will have one of those two um, teachers. We also will be rotating the um, specialty classes during that time and also any students that need intervention. So once you see that sample schedule, you will see a layout of what that looks like and how that day will go and how staffing will be assigned to support your child. Next question, will the Click Academy have any live teaching? And if so, how much per day? How will this compare to what is offered via the Brick Academy remote model? So the Click Academy is um, synchronous learning, which is AM with a, an instructor. The class sizes are between 25 to one. Um, and those teachers would be all launch staff. Um, and the PM sessions are intended to be asynchronous where students are doing independent work. And that will also allow for parents to support them um, based on their work schedules. There's about six hours of instruction for um, launch. The variation between the, the Click and Brick is that the Brick Academy would be um, primarily district teachers that are delivering the instruction also in a synchronous way. Um, and then there also will still be some um, asynchronous learning with independent learning. Also, um, all of the staff that the, your child will come in contact with in the Brick Academy will be district staff um, from social services supports, counselors, social workers, um, the specialty teachers, um, of course, the classroom teacher, and then those STEM teachers that I referenced that will really be helping students engage in more project-based learning that connects across the curriculum and allows them to um, enhance their learning while they're in the home. Um, and I think that that would be also an option that is requires the least amount of transition if we were to move back into an in-person um, setting. So parents are wanting an in-person setting where it is safe uh, when it is safe, I should say, that is also a, a component of the BRIC Academy. The question, is the district starting virtually or not? Yes, we are starting virtually. This is pending board approval on July 30th, which is this Thursday. Could you please repeat the numbers for how many so far have signed up for the click option for each level? It was too choppy and she couldn't hear the numbers. Can you go to the next question so that I can find it? Sure. For Brick Academy, is the learning synchronous on the three days that elementary students are at home? It will be a mix of synchronous and asynchronous. Um, we are also working closely with our child care provider, Unleaching Potential, to see if for a small number of families that have a high need, we can um, provide some child care for those um, families in the buildings um, with the social distancing and the guidelines being followed. So we are working closely to get that finalized. And so we'll be able to share that information with families. The numbers are um, for the individuals who have selected the Click Academy to date as of this morning, um, pre-K seven, K through five, 220, six through eight, 114, 9 through 12, 136. Next question, are there any efforts being made to improve the on-site IT infrastructure to better handle the bandwidth requirements this fall will demand? The yes. Amount, yes, go ahead. The amount of streaming from schools this spring was minimal. Okay. Yes, there are plans and that are, we're working through those plans now. How many hours will virtual learning be with the hybrid model each day? The intent is for students to be engaged minimally um, until about one o'clock. And then um, there are some, there's the, the asynchronous learning. Those um, sample schedules, just to give you um, a quick snapshot, we, we do feel that um, the, the students would have ample time. For example, at the elementary uh, level, it's looking like they would start at around nine. 
and then they would go until about 140 of direct instruction and um, there would be some of the more specialty um, classes um, that would be embedded from the in the afternoon like 140 till about 330. Um, the schedule is pretty final and once you see it it gives you some specific information about what what that time will entail. Um, it is designed as if we were physically back in school, so we wanted to do it in a way that um, will allow for that transition back when we are able to come back in person. But I think once parents see this schedule, and honestly, it should be out. Do we know when it will be out, Nancy? It will be out this afternoon. We're working on it right now. Okay, so we have the, the, the content um, communications just had to make it pretty, but the content is there. It is final. It's, it's, it's ready to be shared. So look for that um, in your email so you can see um, all of the options and you will definitely have it before the 5 p.m. call. So if you have questions, you can either email me any questions or you can join that call, but um, definitely want to answer your questions and I also want to say that um, we have an August 1st deadline because we have to plan and I'm not gonna we're not gonna be hard we're not trying to be punitive with our families um, we we want to certainly do what's best for our families that is front and center we, we have to have a deadline because we have to plan um, but we understand that after August 1st, if you meet on August 3rd and you talk to our principals, we have our middle school principals that are on the call right now. Thank you, um, Dr. Lee and Dr. Pouch. Um, that we want to help you. We want to help you make the best decision for your child. And this is not the way I like to communicate. I know that these are very, very important decisions and we're trying to make them via Zoom. So reach out to us. Um, every email that you send, I respond to them. I get every communications email. I respond to every single one. And if I don't respond, I guarantee you that someone from my team will. So don't leave your questions unanswered. And some people have said, I'm sorry to keep asking you questions. Ask us questions. It helps us get better. We have never, ever responded to a pandemic like this, ever. So please keep your questions coming. But I think once you visually see those schedules, it will answer a lot of the questions that you have regarding the hours, what the students will be doing, um, what the content looks like from an academic perspective, but also from that, that social emotional and overall well-being perspective for our students. What type of device is recommended for kindergarten, kindergarten brick for the hybrid model, virtual hybrid? What type of content? What type of device? So right now, our kindergartners that requested them receive Chromebooks. Um, that is the device that we have um, throughout the district. Um, every kindergartner who said they wanted one, um, they should have received one. If there are our incoming kindergartners will also have a Chromebook. It's a very user-friendly device. Um, it's pretty basic, but it allows them to access the Google Suite, allows them to do Zoom meetings, um, and allows them to do apps and things like that that uh, might help enhance the academic program. We are also looking at a solution for pre-K. Um, we haven't quite figured that one out yet, um, but we're looking at some sort of tablet. We were looking to do iPads. If anyone has a contact with an iPad vendor, we could use it because they're very expensive. Um, but we are trying to get um, iPads for our preschool students. But next, it will be a The next question is, I would like my child to go virtual all school year. And I'm assuming she's asking if this would go virtual all year. The whole so um, the plan is, you know, really, as we think about learning, reimagine and what that looks like, we certainly want there to be connection with our school, but we also understand that we are forced to build those connections in a virtual environment. So if parents are leery of, you know, when their children return back to school, minimally for um, this year, we would like to offer a virtual option. That option may not always be launched the way that it is. We are working now with launch to see if our own teachers can be trained and um, utilize the, the curriculum. I know that um, one of the launch 
um, representatives should be on the call. Missy, I don't know if you're on the call, but we're in conversations with Launch. Um, it is their propriety, it's their intellectual property, um, but we do feel that as we move more into this um, reimagined type of environment of creating different options for students, we would want to afford our families a menu of opportunities. From a financial perspective, it is difficult to maintain launch indefinitely. And, and so we will not be replicating the exact same structure indefinitely, but we are working to commit to that structure minimally for the first semester. Can kindergartners unenroll from Click or Brick Academy and begin homeschooling if virtual instruction is not working for them? My understanding is kindergarten is not required in the state of Missouri. The compensatory age is seven. I wouldn't say that it's not required. We think it is very important for foundational skills and just um, acclimating students into um, the formal school setting. A parent can opt to homeschool their child at any moment. That is a parent's right. Um, you can certainly choose to do that, not just in kindergarten. Um, homeschooling is available to any parent that opts to do that. Um, so yes, you can choose to homeschool your child at any point if you feel that that is in your child's best interest. My hope would be that as a district, as a school community, we are um, afforded the opportunity to partner with you so that we can make sure that we're doing our part to meet your child's needs. But if you feel like after those efforts have been exhausted, you want to do something different for your child, absolutely. And if your child is homeschooled, they still will be able to access some district services, such as our TAG program, which is Talented and Gifted Development. There are some other um, specialty classes that your child may be able to access. Some of our sports programs at the elementary level, once we're able to play sports. But those are some ways to still stay engaged with our community um, if you do decide to homeschool your child. But our hope would be that we meet your child's needs and you want him or her to be in your city. Will a schedule be released for the CLICK model? There is a sample um, schedule for um, the CLICK, yes. I have a child transitioning to middle school. Are devices provided or is there a recommended device that, should be, that we should use? Will she receive textbooks for her classes or will everything be online? Um, we provide all the devices that our students need to access the educational program. There are some books. Um, they are dependent on what the content is, mostly around literature, some novels and things of that nature. Um, but that information will be conveyed by the middle school. They have a very um, comprehensive plan that, that is solid, um, is very impressive. And so um, they will be able to share more details. And are we not able to add them as panelists so they can respond? I will put them on right now. Thank you. I might have to hold off. Let me ask another question. Okay. Um, does launch curriculum mirror U City's curriculum? The launch curriculum is aligned to state standards as well as the U City curriculum. So um, there may be some content that is delivered in a little bit of a variation, but for the most part, um, there curriculum is aligned to Missouri Learning Standards, and that is the driver for um, the district's curriculum as well. Missy, do you have anything to add? You may or may not be a panelist. I That's just promoted her. Yeah. Okay. okay. Missy, are you yeah. on? Can you yeah. respond as well? Thank you. Yeah, I absolutely can. So Launch uses the same Missouri Learning Standards that University City uses. So our curriculums are very much aligned in scope and sequence and in content. And Grace or Kate, um, if you are able, do you want to address textbooks at the middle school level? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so we, uh, most of our content is accessible online. We are going to ensure that students are able to have um, novels that they can read. And we do want to make sure that we have text in students' hands, but most everything will be accessible online. Uh, there will also be math consumable books that students will be able to work out of as well. They'll be available specifically for sixth and seventh grade. I have an incoming kindergartner, but did not request a Chromebook. I didn't realize I needed to. Can I still do that? You don't have to request it just yet. 
um, we are still going through the process of seeing who is going to determine what option. Once we have that information, um, the buildings will be determining a plan to get you materials. Um, and it won't just be a Chromebook. We welcome our babies. Um, and so we're also uh, working to find ways to let your kindergartner see his or her new school in a socially distanced way. So it will be a celebration. It'll be very different. We will be safe, but um, please expect much more detail around um, onboarding, transitioning your youngster to the district. We want their first impression to be a wow factor, even if we have to do it in a very different way. And the same would be for a new, any new student that's coming at any grade level in our district. We will um, do whatever is needed to welcome you and your family and make sure that you have um, the resources. U City has a great community. A lot of parents have asked about school supply list. I know that the no tax weekend is coming up. I'm asking just hold off for a second on that. Um, we are working to finalize those supply lists because when we do come back to school, the, the process is gonna be very different because we really can't share. Um, but we wanna make what parents have to purchase minimal um, because we understand um, just the, the, the stress that, that the whole pandemic is having. So expect um, more details about those things, but every child will have what they need and you will be overly communicated with from your building once we determine who is um, enrolling in which option. Does the virtual component of Brick Academy allow children to interact with each other online or just with teachers, particularly interested in kindergarten and elementary? Yeah, so um, I'm looking at the schedule now that you'll see soon. Um, there is a portion that's SEL, social emotional learning. And we see that as a time just to really check in with students. There's also class meetings that happen. Um, I'm actually meeting with the elementary uh, PTO presidents and some other parents to talk about learning pods, which is uh, a, an effort that is being replicated in many districts across the country where families are working together so that they can support their children outside of school. So um, our goal is to give parents um, options that they can do outside of school, but we will certainly create those opportunities for students to engage with each other, even virtually um, during school. Is there a timeline for making decisions regarding brick learning? Is it virtual for the first four weeks, the first quarter, et cetera? Right now, um, we are saying the first quarter with the understanding that that could change, meaning it could be shorter or it could be longer. Um, we will continue to monitor um, the cases in St. Louis, in our area, um, continue to monitor the accessibility of timely tests, um, and continue to monitor the recommendations from the health department. Um, we, want, we wanted to start in a hybrid. We wanted to start with students at school some of the time that was our plan um, so our goal is to get back to that option as quickly as possible but in a way that is safe um, we will also throughout the virtual closure have opportunities for parents to talk with students about what safety looks like um, practicing wearing masks if they're not already um, understanding the importance of social distancing really understanding what the safety, those safety precautions look like so that whenever we are able to start school, we can stay in school and, and not have to have another closure. My son did summer school through launch. I did not find it helpful. Is there alternative program for learning? The other alternative program is the District's Brick Academy. With the virtual, will parents still have to sign up again for the meals, even though my child is getting it now? So we will have um, a new sign up for meals because we will have new families and our process may change. So we will over communicate that information. We always communicate first to the families that are already receiving meals. And then of course that will be communicated throughout the district. Do we have an idea of the numbers that will indicate when it is safe for kids to go back into buildings if we choose brick? We are working with the health department to try to get threshold metrics. We have not been successful at getting those metrics. So that is a push 
that superintendents across the area that we're making. Um, we do feel that that will be helpful and we also feel it will be helpful for consistency sake since many of our communities are in similar um, locations. And so um, we don't have definite information about what those threshold metrics are yet, but our goal is to get more definition around those threshold metrics. This person is really excited to hear that kindergarten has a transition program to welcome kids. Do you know when these dates will be as we may be going to Kansas to help get, get some help for grandparents and want to be around for it? We had um, dates scheduled that are in the plan. I think they were August. Um, we will push those dates back. Um, however, um, if parents want, I've given parents tours. So if you ever want a tour, just want your kindergartner to see the school, happy to do that. Um, but we will have dates um, closer to maybe mid-August, late August, and maybe even early September for those transition um, dates so that our incoming families can see their new spaces. Will the CLIC model also include classroom meetings and SEL time, social emotional learning time? Missy? Yes, absolutely. The elementary um, time starts the day with a class meeting every day to bring connection between all the members of the class. And, and we absolutely understand and know the importance of social emotional connection for our students at this time. I have a student transitioning into the high school from the middle school. Will she keep the Chromebook she has from the middle school? Also, what is in place for the incoming freshmen? So um, yes, she would keep her Chromebook. Hopefully it's operable and so there won't be a change because it's the same device. Um, for our freshmen, there's a transition program that was planned for them as well, where they would come into the school and spend a few days to get acclimated to the building. That will be on hold, but there will still be um, onboarding, um, lots of conversations with our counselors. Our counselors will be starting back to work early so that they can um, help navigate many of these questions that the parents have, particularly with our incoming um, freshmen. So we understand that that transition from middle school to high school is extremely important and that freshman year is critical for them to get a solid start in their high school experience. So expect um, tons of supports and wraparound services for, for your youngster as they make that huge transition, just with understanding expectations, understanding courses, understanding grading and, and that it, it counts and it doesn't go away. It's a part of that transcript. So all of those pieces um, are part of the high school's plan. And they too have a very solid uh, comprehensive plan um, that will be shared. I know there is a meeting on Thursday um, with the high school. With the blended option, are kids attending full day or part-time and finishing the day virtually? If the students are back, whenever we are back and it's safe, it will be a full day. Will launch students be using district provided Chromebooks? We will, we will provide Chromebooks for students who are using launch. I understand that ninth graders will attend Brick Academy five days a week when it is safe to do so. Have you considered allowing seniors to attend more days as well, since this will be their last year when it is safe to do so? At this time, um, the plan is for seniors, well, 10th graders through 12th graders to attend Monday, Tuesday, or um, Thursday, Friday. Um, that is the plan right now. Our plans are fluid. Um, they could change. I, I say this is temporary. We do hope that we're able to get to the point where all of our students can come every day. So, um, but right now, um, the focus is on our freshmen and those students who have challenges with extensive supports and that uh, learning uh, lab concept, distance learning concept for our 10th through 12th graders. I'm assuming this person is asking about Brick Academy. Since the first semester is going to virtual, what will be the online program that children will be working with? The Brick Academy right now is, is for the first quarter right now. And so um, that is the process for this first quarter, minimally. Um, we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to move to having students in person. The platform is Google Classroom. That is the primary um, platform that we will use in our district. 
This question is for Missy, the launch representative. The summer program allowed students to work ahead. Can they do that in the program during the school year? Yes, they absolutely can. Our curriculum is not locked down, um, so they have the ability to work ahead. Um, this person turned their middle schooler's Chromebook in because it was not working. Will she get a new one? Yes. With Brick Academy, will students need to check in throughout the day or would it be feasible to get our work done in the morning and spend the afternoon doing extracurricular activities? The um, schedule for the Brick Academy has independent student work time, mostly in the afternoon. Are we going to receive recommendations on how to best set up a space for the kids in the home for online learning to help it feel like that the school space, like the school space and, and a place of learning to help them focus? I'd be curious what is recommended by teachers. We can certainly um, give suggestions. I think it varies based on your child. Um, some children need more structure. They need a desk. They need, you know, a dedicated space. Some children do just fine working on a beanbag. So I think you would need to know your child, but we can certainly give you some suggestions. Actually, our, one of our Brittany Wood students did an amazing video about her online experience. And if she's willing, um, that would be a great tool. It's user-friendly, it's, 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 it's um, presented from a kid perspective. Um, so if she's willing to allow us to share, she did it for a class project, I think that would be a great example. Are school days off typically equally balanced between Mondays and Fridays? And if not, has thought been given to the impact that has on A cohort versus B cohorts in the blended brick academy? So we're looking at our academic calendar right now. Um, there are some PD days, for example, that are on a Friday. We will be modifying those. Um, so more to come on the academic calendar, but we would make sure that over the first quarter, there are about three days that have a, um, a PD day, so those will be modified, and so expect more information. But the days will be balanced. Um, there's one um, holiday, um, and that's that's Labor Day, and so that that's a Monday. But we'll make sure that those days are balanced so that the cohorts have um, commensurate time. I'm going to go back to Alicia's question. Uh, she wanted to know what type of devices are recommended for remote learning, but I'm going to cast it as, will Chromebooks given by the district be okay for remote learning? Yes. This is from Trish Rose Sandler, and she says, Leela is happy to have her video about how to uh, set up your house and, and do distance learning. Thank you. It is buried in my email. So if someone from Brittany can send me it again, um, I remember watching it and I was just too excited. But um, I know it's buried in my thousands of emails. So I you have it. it. <laughs> we will get that out. Thank you. <laughs> How is attendance going to be managed? If it works better for our family to have school on Saturday and Sunday, is that feasible? I think that um, it, I honestly, yes, we, this is such unknown territory. And I think the reality is we're all going to have to make it work. And I know family life structure is different. Our goal is for students to feel engaged, for students to get content, for parents to feel supported. So there are going to be a lot of unique nuances that we're going to have to work through. There really isn't um, a complete perfect one size fits all because this isn't a perfect scenario. So we will work with families. Um, we do want engagement um, at the beginning of our closure. Last spring we had many families that we just hadn't heard from so we reached out so we will do that but if you're engaged and you've communicated that this system works the best for your family and we can support you that's what we want to do. We want to be partners in this work and um, really figure out ways to innovate and also ways to be creative around what this learning process is going to look like in a very um, atypical type of situation. This is for uh, Missy, uh, the launch representative. For Click Academy, is it six solid hours per day or does that include asynchronous work? I can answer that. It's, an, it's asynchronous as well as synchronous. The um, synchronous work happens in the AM and then the asynchronous work is intended in the PM. 
How will you identify those 10th through 12th graders needing extra help and services for Brick Academy? The high school has a um, metric that they will be using um, based on engagement from the last closure, um, academic achievement, um, you know, social emotional needs, um, definitely our students that have IEPs, um, and there will be some parent contact. So they do have a solid process in ways that they will be um, cheering those students. We actually know who they are already based on data. So it is driven based on data um, and really with the intent of giving our students the maximum amount of support um, so that they can persist through um, high school and, and graduate um, successfully. For new to the district families, if they would like a tour of their respective schools, who is the best contact to make that happen? Me, just email me. I'm happy to give you a tour. If the building leader is available, um, they would certainly welcome that opportunity as well. But up until this point, um, since we're still in, we were in a quasi closed phase, I have been um, facilitating those tours. But we do have an amazing team who are in the building. We wear a mask, we socially distance, so we're able to do it in a safe way. So just reach out to me and we're happy to facilitate next steps. My kindergartner knows how to read. I can see a situation where he has to be present in online lesson to learn to read and, and, a little, and being a little bored. What should we do in these situations? We're gonna have to differentiate. Um, we have several kindergartners who come to us reading. Mine was one of them. Um, so I understand um, that. And so um, once we know who our kindergartners are and where their levels are, uh, we would have to differentiate so that um, they're not focused on decoding letters and understanding the alphabet when they're able to read. There are some um, foundational literacy things that we would want them to have around phonics, phonemic awareness, but that would be assessed based on where they are. Um, a child that knows how to read, um, we also want them to understand the rules of the most complex English language and then be able to transfer that information to comprehension and then of course, ultimately to writing and making their own meaning. Um, but that will be done um, with their teacher and also working with the parent so that we can differentiate. So differentiation um, should still happen um, and, and it shouldn't be that your child is bored. Um, it is difficult again for kindergartners in a virtual environment, but um, our goal would be to make it as, as exciting as possible. And there are ways to do that by including your child in, in that process and maybe they read and they share their learning. So we have some creative ways that we can address the needs of all of our learners. The, the positive of this is the class sizes are still um, going to be somewhat small, which is going to be helpful um, for us to differentiate um, while making those, addressing those social emotional needs as well. My upcoming first grader receives speech services and per SSD, certain services will not be given. Will speech be provided or will the district assist in finding outside services? So I don't know who told you that speech would not be provided. Um, that's not what my understanding. We will have a Zoom call with SSD families, with SSD staff and district staff so that we can clarify a lot of misconceptions. I'm hearing that there are some misconceptions and we all need to get on the same page. Um, if a child has services outlined in their IEP under FAPE, Free and Appropriate Public Education and the IDEA Act, they are required to receive those services. We may have to think differently about how those services are provided. There may be compensatory time, but we will ensure that your child receives um, the services. And um, we, we will be more involved in that communication so that um, those misconceptions and the misinformation is, is in fact clarified. So thank you for sharing that. Um, that is something that we will certainly clarify. How will children be grouped when BRIC takes place on the middle school level? Okay, you wanna take that one? So we are working to make sure that our student groups are small so that we're keeping them around 10 or under and we also want them to be a representative um, group of our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, um, as well as making sure that we can meet the needs of each student. So we're looking at each cohort and we're basically picking each and every student and making sure that it's the right fit for each student in the cohort. We have actually reached the end of our questions. Uh, please feel free to put any more in the chat box. 
excuse me, the uh, question and answer box. Nothing yet. Here we go. I got a few more. Are the cohorts going to be differentiated homogeneous or heterogeneous throughout the elementary school? I see the benefit of heterogeneous groups, but in the virtual model, I can see situations like the kindergarten parent arise throughout. We will um, be grouping our students um, in a way that best meets their needs while reflecting um, the diversity of U City. So um, there are there will be some clustering depending on students' needs, but our goal would be to have heterogeneous groups as much as possible with the understanding um, that there will certainly need to be differentiation and variation of instructional practices, approach, and even content, because our students are not coming to us all at the same level. Um, and while the virtual environment is, is, is challenging, um, we, we believe that we have enough staffing throughout the building where we can tap into individuals' expertise and give students those uh, rich experiences. So. Sorry, thank you. Um, for kids who were in the process of evaluation for SSD but got interrupted by the school closure, how will we proceed? So right now, um, where the process started um, or ended, I should say, we would be engaging and re-engaging in that process. Um, it would depend on what components were already completed around testing and evaluation. For um, some students, we will have a new assessment if that is needed and that is uh -huh. desired by the IEP team. And so uh, more information to come, but our goal would be to uh, quickly start, restart what was stopped to get those processes going. There is the intent to reevaluate every IEP um, just to be sure that the goals are the right goals and that we are making the right decisions for children. So expect um, contact from SSD. And I think that, again, that Zoom call will be um, a way for us to give you specific information. Our SSD staff are technically on um, summer break, the teaching staff, I should say. I am working with the um, director and the area coordinators who are the administrators. Once staff return to school, um, those case managers will be looking at their caseload and seeing where they are and following up with families so that we can expedite those next steps to put the plans in place for our children prior to school starting. Will classes like gym take place? Yes. Um, so the specialty classes are woven throughout the schedule. Um, and so I wish we had it all pretty so you could see it. We've been working hard and trying to get a lot of information and many of the questions that parents have been sending um, we've incorporated those answers. We also have a Q&A document, but um, there is time for the specialties. And we're also trying to, not trying, we are weaving in um, strings, um, music, and art as well into um, the day for students who are in the Brick Academy. This question pertains to middle school. How will you assess students to groups, um, particularly those making the transition from outside the district? Of cohorts. So we will be um, working with the counselors. If we need additional information, we'll definitely be reaching out individually to parents. We know that we want to make sure that we have the right fit for each student while also doing it in an equi equitable way that represents um, our school. So if we need additional information, we may be reaching out to parents. Um, we also have a number of assessments that we will do at the beginning of school. And if we need to move students around, we um, may have to do that. Will second graders be evaluated for the tagged program this year? So we typically do that assessment in second grade. So you are an existing parent and we also do it for all incoming um, students. It is difficult to do the COGAT assessment virtually. Um, there is an, or an oral component to it. So we haven't quite figured out how to best assess students. Ideally, we would be in person so we could still test every second grader and then those incoming students. So more to come 
on the um, tag assessment. We haven't figured out how to do that in a virtual environment. Are the teachers going to be more accessible? So one of the things that I have owned is that um, our consistency around the closure last spring was not, it varied. And we were literally building a plane while it was in the air. We feel that we have learned a lot and we understand the importance of being there for this community. And so I believe that our plan now outlines um, clearer expectations regarding engagement with students and also engagement with staff. So um, I would say that yes, they will be more accessible and um, will ask that you as a community, as a parent, hold us accountable for that. Could you touch on why a 10th through 12th grade family would want to choose click over brick? Understanding click for the high school is being taught by the most part by you city teachers. That makes us think virtual learning in both brick and click would be the same for 10 through 12. By choosing click, isn't the only difference being in cutting your student off from in-person help if they end up needing it? So if I'm understanding, the, the main difference, the click academy is taught by launch. That is one of the primary uh, variances. The Brick Academy is taught by UCD teachers. There are some launch courses that we already have that students can access. And we also have some high school teachers who are teaching launch courses that they have been teaching in the past. The other benefit, in my opinion, of the Brick Academy is students having access to the distance learning centers. If a parent wants the Brick Academy and doesn't want to send their child in for those um, sessions, even at the ninth grade level, we don't encourage that, but you have that option. Um, we want safety to drive your decisions, um, but if you have, want your child to access UCD teachers, um, then the Brick Academy is that option. And if there are issues that you have with them coming in at any point, that is your right, and we will work with you to best meet your child's needs. You, answer, you mentioned a question and answer document. Where can that be accessed? Nancy, when will it be ready? By the end of the day, and I'll make sure to get an email out to everybody about where it is. Uh, you guys have great questions and many questions, and we have been logging all of them to make sure this is really comprehensive. Thank you. Has a new orchestra teacher been hired for the high school since Ms. Davis left? Yes, she's amazing. Um, she's coming to us from the Ferguson Florissant School District. She grew up right here in U City, and um, she's excited to join the U City team. Um, I'm going to go back to a question. Will they be evaluated on a testing level, or will they be grouped by their strengths? Um, I'm not sure what grade level this is for. I, think, I don't think there's one metric. I think, yes, you know, definitely assessment data, but also there are many metrics to use. A test doesn't tell you the whole story about a child. So there will be multiple metrics that will be used to um, support our students and effectively place them in cohorts. And of course, we want your input. You know, parents have a lot of insight regarding their child as well. So there will be multiple metrics and not one single factor that we use to determine what those cohorts and groups will look like. One definite metric or factor is families. So that is first. If you're in a family, you can anticipate your children being in the same cohort, but when it comes to what groups they will be in within their school, there'll be multiple metrics to determine that. Okay, could you in very quickly, for someone who came in late, restate the difference between click versus brick? The primary um, difference is that CLIC is through launch. Um, the teaching staff is um, launch staff, mostly from Springfield Public Schools. Um, the content is aligned to Missouri Learning Standards and is similar to U City's scope and sequence. And we also use the Missouri Learning Standards. The CLIC Academy would be a full semester commitment because of planning and scheduling and staffing. The Brick Academy is um, mostly U City teachers. Um, it allows for students to have access to the building. Um, once it is safe, 
um, some days a week and then also distance learning on other days. Um, it provides, both provide synchronous and asynchronous learning where learning is provided by teachers and also there's some independent work. Um, U City will have, um, we have orchestra, for example, where at the elementary level, if you're in fourth grade, you have access to that. And um, there's more connection to University City, more connection to our teaching staff, more connection to our support services, um, and just our overall school community. And the Brick Academy is flexible um, in that um, students will hopefully be able to come back in person. And it also allows us to move to a complete closure if um, that were to happen, which is how we're starting the beginning of the year. I'm not sure still which option is best for my kindergartner. Can I switch from Click to Brick or vice versa? Once you identify Click um, and we start the year, that would be a semester commitment. If you would like to speak with, with someone, you can email me and I'm happy to talk through to learn more about your child, um, to learn more about you know, your vision for his or her schooling experience. I can put you in contact with the building principal of that school um, so you can help make a, an informed decision. Thanks for your patience. Um, can you explain what a distance learning hub might look like? So um, imagine a, a room or a space where children come and they are able to get supports. Um, they can protect, perhaps schedule time to meet with specific teachers in a socially distanced way. They will have some social interaction with the group in a socially distanced way. Um, if they need to speak with a counselor, um, if they need some social emotional supports. Um, we're also working to find ways just to build community in the school. We have a number of clubs that, that take place. It may be a way for them to meet. So um, it will be co-hearted, um, it will be safe. But um, another layer of support, what we've heard from families is that some students need connection. And so this affords them the opportunity to get that connection and also to get any differentiated support that may be needed in the school building. A tag on that question is, um, she asked, how would those six or seven hours be spent? Which I guess as addresses the question, would they be there for six or seven hours if they use the hub? The high school will be answering that question on Thursday. And once you see the sample um, schedules, it will help to um, further explain that. For various projects and activities where it's needed to have tactile physical object for the activity beyond standard school supplies, sorry, does the school provide that prep materials or do we have to find them and prep them? So our goal is to provide what students need. It's the same as we've done in the past and so we will work to do that. I know this past closure, we sent home many kits and art supplies and things like that. So um, without knowing specifically what it is, our goal would be to provide what students need um, in order to effectively engage in the instructional program. I'm not sure I understand the difference between cohorts and groups. Are there two cohorts per school, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, with groups of 10 to 12 students? I think that was the size mentioned for middle school within the cohorts. So the cohorts are either A and B. I'm sorry, they're A or B. Um, one cohort, cohort A would come to school on Monday, Tuesday. Cohort B would come to school on Thursday, Friday. Within those cohorts will be groups. And those would be um, students' classes. The class sizes would be no more than 10 to 12 um, because of social distancing. And it would be designed to eventually have in-person classes that are safe. I've seen all sorts of creative barriers that some school districts are building. Will our school districts have physical dividers in classrooms? We do not have dividers in all of our classrooms. We have um, dividers and plexiglass in common use spaces, such as offices and other areas that are common use. Um, our strategy is social distancing and masks. We've had a lot of comments about elementary students 
wearing masks, as I've shared, we haven't landed on what age that would start. Um, I hope to have that answer very, very soon. Um, but right now, there are no um, there are no structures that are being built in every space, but where it makes sense, those structures are being put in place. We had an audit conducted by SM Wilson. They have um, have completed audits for many school districts and given us guidance on what safety precautions would, we should put in place based on guidelines from CDC as well as the health department. So we have executed and implemented those recommendations and are continuing to make those improvements as we lead up to a in-person return. Will there be fall sports? I hope so. Right now, our students are in phase one, which is practice, there's no contact. Um, if we get these cases down and people wear masks and stay at home and wash their hands and not gather, um, I mean, and, and yes, we need a vaccine too, but um, there are ways that we've, we've seen students, our students are practicing now. Um, they're out there on the field. We have not had a case in, in U City with our athletes. Um, so they are anxious, they're ready, um, but it, it depends on what medical advice we're getting. But right now they're in phase one. Um, and we're hopeful that we phase four is the goal. That's where we can actually play and have some sense of normalcy. Um, we're not there yet. So my hope is that um, our students will be able to play. Athletics are a big component of a schooling experience for many children. And so we want them to have that holistic experience as much as possible, but we also want them to be safe. And we also want the community to be safe. Does Launch Academy also provide school supplies for special projects in learning? Missy? Uh, yes, at the elementary level, there's a workbook that is incorporated into the content and all that workbook contains materials to be able to make man manipulatives. Um, we very much value those hands-on experiences at the elementary age um, and wanna make sure that we do have a supply list that can be purchased that's less than $25. Um, but we have also incorporated the ability to make all those materials within the workbook um, if you choose to do it in, in that way. Um, at the secondary level, uh, all of everything needed is included in the content. Will the follow-up email detail how the day will look in Click or Brick? Yes. And how would a day look at school with social distancing? If they do click, how does that day look? How does that day look? Well, click is not in person, so there, there's no social distancing. Can we request specific days for our child to attend in school with the brick model? We know that parents have um, unique needs, um, so we will have that, that process. We will not be able to accommodate, you know, 202,000 requests. So um, there will be a process that will be shared for cohorting, um, as well as um, requests for specific days. Um, but our, our goal is to, to do it based on families first and um, to start our process by looking at those multiple metrics to um, group students and if there are unique outliers that differ from that, um, we will be considering those on a case-by-case -case basis, but there will have to be a compelling reason. We just will not be able to accommodate everyone's um, request and do it in a fair and equitable way. How often do you clean? Is there a schedule? Has sanitizer been placed? What measures have you cities taken to prevent the spread amongst the smaller kids who wanna touch and play with each other? So we have um, created kid-friendly signage um, that um, indicates that with visuals for students who may not know how to read yet. We also have enhanced our cleaning protocols. Um, we're hiring additional staff. The reason that we are looking at Wednesday being the, the virtual day is um, so that we can clean in between cohorts. Um, we feel that that is important as well and there will be more routine procedures. We have already procured um, endless supplies of hand sanitizers, um, disinfecting wipes, uh, gloves, uh, masks, 
uh, disposable mask for students and for staff. So we are consistently stockpiling that. Um, we have new equipment such as um, sprays that, that, that clean surfaces quickly in a very intense kind of um, corporate a corporation type of setting and so commercial setting I should say so those are some of the precautions um, that we have put in place and again these have been recommended by the CDC and recommended by our audit from SM Wilson. Will the parents get information in the mail about Brittany Woods from each teacher? Okay. So yes you will get um, communication from our teachers and we will also begin um, once we have more of our pieces solidified, because we're rapidly working on creating a single stream communication platform so that we can minimize any confusion and have one landing hub for parents and students to be able to find information related to classroom materials and assignments. We have a comment. You have all obviously worked really hard on this and we deeply appreciate it and are assured by it. Thank you. A pleasure. We have a kind of a repeat question. How would you do gym, lunch, library, music, etc.? Very creatively. Um, so the schedule has those specialty um, sections in woven in and it will be shorter chunks. So for example, I know with library we use story time as a way to engage students, um, art, They've had virtual lessons already. Um, students have been able to uh, blow lessons. I know that Marnie uh, Clanch is our art and um, drama facilitator. She has a new title. <laughs> She's on our call. And so they have been meeting. They're participating in PD with COCA um, to think about how they can enhance their craft in the area of art, um, music as well. Um, so I just think that we're just going to have to be creative. There are a lot of uh, virtual examples that, that teachers have used across the country to engage students and um, I, I expect that those things will be in play in U City. Uh, we have a great team of creative, creative individuals and we have some amazing students who are helping us as well. So I, I expect to see um, positive things and more consistency. I think the specialty area was an area where we were a bit inconsistent. And so we will have much more consistency um, with the delivery of instruction and also the quality. This is our last question. Will staff be in the buildings during all virtual learning or will they be working from home? That is to be determined. Okay, we finished our questions. It is 10.03. Anything else? I just want to um, thank everyone for your patience, for your questions, for your suggestions. Um, this is how we grow, and I firmly believe that University City is truly a community. We're truly a family, and we would not have the plan that we have. Um, if it were not for all the input and ideas from our family. So thank you um, for trusting us and thank you for being partners with us. Um, and to the team, um, staff, administrators, thank you for your tireless support and work as we um, do something that has never been done before, but we do it in a U-City humanized, um, heart, heartful way. So thank you.